this video, I'm gonna teach you how to understand if your driver is trail braking enough using a very effective data analysis technique. Hello everyone, this is Bruno. When I'm at the track, it's very common to hear one driver complaining a lot of a lot more understeer than another driver, even on the same car. The first thing that I'm gonna check is how much this driver complaining of understeer is trail braking. In order to do that quickly, we need to develop very effective techniques, and it's exactly what we're gonna be discussing in this video. Before anything else, quick recap on what trail braking is. As we can see here, we have a steering profile, and we are gonna look at a brake trace where no trail braking is being performed. So you can see that there is no overlap at corner entry between the brakes and the steering. In the second example, the driver is trail braking a little more, so you can start seeing a little more overlap between the, the brakes and the steering. This means that the driver is carrying more the brakes as it starts to steer. The ideal scenario would look a lot more like that. You can see that at corner entry, the driver is still holding the brakes as it starts to, to steer. And why is this so important? Because this dictates how much we're exploiting the tire grip here in the corner entry phase. As you guys know, we have the friction lips for the tires. So we are comparing lateral forces versus longitudinal forces and the maximum potential grip that the tire has. So we are looking first as a passenger for a passenger car tire and then for a race tire, which we can produce a lot more lateral and longitudinal forces. In order to, explain, to exploit the combined grip, we should be exploiting not only the maximum braking grip, not only the maximum lateral grip, but also all this region over here. So if there is one driver that does not exploit enough, this is what it would look like when exploiting the tire friction ellipse. So it would brake at the tire maximum capacity, let's say, but then it would not trail brake enough, it would not combine enough the forces, and you can see that it's not using all of the grip available. Now in the other case where the driver is doing that properly, he's braking at the maximum capacity and then exploiting all of the combined grip available for the tire before going to the apex and maximum lateral force. So let's visualize each friction ellipse first for each tire of the car. So let's say that the car is taking a left-hand corner. We would have front left friction ellipse, front right, rear left, and rear right. And in this case, we can see that the driver is not using all of the combined grip at corner entry. We could simplify all of these friction ellipses into a single one. Let's say that we add all of them together. This is what would look like. So we can see that the driver is not exploiting the performance ellipse of the car. The problem that we have here is that even though it all looks very nice in theory, in real life, it's a different story. We do not have a sensor to quantify lateral forces, at least in most cases, and we also do not have a calculation of the friction lips in each part of the circuit. So for that, we need to find another technique to help us understand if the driver is exploiting all the potential grip from the tire. For that, we are gonna use the GG diagram. So in the GG diagram, instead of looking at lateral forces and longitudinal forces, we are looking at lateral acceleration versus longitudinal acceleration. This is the real data from a car, so you can understand all the combinations of lateral acceleration, longitudinal acceleration. Now we start trying to quantify this. For that, we are going to look at combined acceleration channel. So we are looking at any given point and the combined acceleration is exactly the length of this vector. So let's look at the length of the vector and calculate it using a math channel, as you can see here. So this is basically the vector sum of lateral acceleration, longitudinal acceleration. And later on, we are going to see why this vector length is so important. All right, so now let's start connecting trail braking with GG diagrams. Let's take the case where the driver was not trail braking at all. This is what the GG diagram would look like. So the driver would brake at the maximum capacity, it would release the brakes before it starts steering. So it would lose all longitudinal acceleration before gaining lateral acceleration, before steering and then reaching something close to peak acceleration. In the second case where the driver is trail braking a little more and you can see more overlap between steering and brake profile, this is what the GG diagram would look like. So you brake at maximum capacity again, but instead of releasing all of the brakes to start steering, you start steering as you release the brake. So you start seeing that we are exploiting a little more this region of the GG diagram. And in the ideal case where the driver is trail braking more, we can see a lot of overlap between brakes and steering. And not only we brake at maximum capacity, 
we also, as we release the brakes, we steer the tires to exploit all of its combined grip available, meaning all combined acceleration of the car. So this shows us that we can very easily identify if one car is trail braking more than the other. The problem that we have is that in real life, it is not that easy to be analyzing GG diagrams. Let's try to compare two GG diagrams from real data. Car number one, car number two. It's very hard for us to understand the differences between the drivers. And data analysis is all about being effective and assertive. So for that, we're going to start using the combined acceleration for this analysis. So here, we're going to look at two different scenarios again. The first one, ideal trail braking. So you have the lateral acceleration profile for the corner and the longitudinal acceleration coming from the brakes. Let's say that the driver in this case is exploiting all of the tire's friction ellipse. So you can see that all of this is being used and the length of the combined acceleration indicated by this length is consistent throughout the corner. You see that the length is not changing much. And by plotting the combined acceleration, you can see that it is fairly consistent as it should be. We have maximum braking that typically can be a little higher since you are at higher speeds with more downforce, decreases slightly for the maximum lateral acceleration. However, it is consistent throughout the corner. Now we're going to look at the other case where the driver is not trail braking enough and they're releasing the brakes a little earlier and not overlapping enough. As you can see, there is a drop in longitudinal acceleration and this is what we would see in the friction ellipse. The length of the combined acceleration vector is not consistent anymore. You can see that there is a drop for the combined or for the entry phase before going up again. So if we plot the combined acceleration channel now, this is what we would see. We would see this drop. And whenever we see a drop in combined acceleration from braking to apex, this could be an indication that the driver is not trail braking enough. The best part of this technique you don't even need a comparison driver. With a single driver, you can understand if they are trail braking enough. After identifying this, you can then speak to the driver to understand, could the driver be doing a better job or is it is actually coming from the vehicle setup? Maybe the car is too unstable, which does not allow the driver to trail brake enough. So now let's look at a real example. First, we're going to look at the combined acceleration channel. We can see that the baseline driver has a lot more consistent combined acceleration, while the driver in red is dropping a lot more between braking and lateral acceleration. So this tells me that the driver is possibly not trail braking enough. Next, we're going to look at the brake profile and confirm that he's not trail braking as much as the other driver. And since he's not trail braking as much as the other driver, not only he's not exploiting all of the combined grip of the tire, but he's also, in this case, even inducing more understeer on the car since he's not loading on the front axle. If you remember, we have a complete video on the series about how trail braking will influence vehicle balance. In this case specifically, all of that was caused because of an early braking. So since the driver was braking too early, he notices that he's not carrying enough speed and then he needs to release the brakes. So in this case, Braking later and then carrying more the brakes would be how the driver can exploit the maximum grip of the tire. By using all of the combined grip from the tires, you are going to get better lap times. And I just showed a technique using the combined acceleration that allows you to understand and quantify that. Now you can go back to your data and ask yourself the following question. Is my driver trail braking enough? And in case he's not, is it coming from driver technique, from vehicle balance or from track characteristics? If you like this content, you would love our seminars. We have one seminar fully dedicated to performance engineering, where we discuss for multiple days a lot more content than what you saw here in this video. Besides that, we have a vehicle dynamics seminar covering all different areas of vehicle dynamics and help you to better understand the car behavior on track. You can find the calendar link in the video description. Besides that, these are the services offered by Optimum G. Performance engineering, where you can hire one of our performance engineers to apply all of the techniques that we use at the track with your team. We also offer vehicle dynamics consulting, which includes a wide range of services such as simulation, car development and car design. And we also offer simulation software in the areas of kinematics, tires and vehicle dynamics. If you are interested, you can find a lot more information on our, on our website. Thank you for watching the video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section so that I can get back to you. And I'll see you in the next one.